Welcome to Martini Time. Hope I got my throat clear. So, mm, this is the happy time of the day. My not happy hour, but half happy 15 minutes <laughs> here in Blackstone, Virginia. Another beautiful day at the center of the world, but then you two are at the center of the world. So let's talk about the pro-Constitution judge. Now I was just watching, I've been writing about this all day, been stimulated by um, an old book I pulled out of my bookshelves, which I, I don't buy new books now, well, once in a while, but I, I go back and read books that I've read years ago, and uh, I'm refreshed and reinvigorated by them because I've, uh, my, uh, apparently, I, my understanding has increased. So when I go back and read these, I see them full of fresh ideas in a way that I didn't see them. Maybe I did when I first read it, but anyway, it's still fresh to me. And the book I'm reading is uh, Karen Armstrong's uh, The Battle for God. Of course, this is backwards. What does it say, dog? <laughs> and, uh, but primarily, this is the battle for God. It's about the rise of fundamentalism. And, uh, and this is so important because we're right in the middle of that battle, uh, even with uh, Judge Kavanaugh and uh, the pro-Constitution judge. I was just listening to a, tr a Trump rally, and they were chanting, Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh, uh, the pro-Constitution judge. Well, what does that mean? So we need a wider lens. We need a wide angle. We need to be able to see the horizon of history instead of just narrowly focusing on our present moment. Because our present moment makes absolutely no sense unless you have a wider context. Just like with anything that happens, in the new, if you don't have context, the meaning doesn't, the meaning doesn't, uh, is a narrow meaning. You take something, we're always going, yo, don't take it out of context. Well, if you take something out of context, you change the meaning to be relevant to your interest, you see, rather than the, the meaning uh, in a wider context. So anyway, the context that, we're, that I look at history in uh, really starts at the end of the Middle Ages with the birth of the Age of Reason. It's called the Enlightenment or the Age of Reason. But it was in Europe that this consciousness bloomed or was awakened, this rational consciousness of the individual. Individuals have rational consciousness. That's what was the basis for our Constitution, uh, that men are naturally endowed with reason. And uh, if you're naturally endowed with reason, then that means that you can have direct experience of truth through your own reason. And therefore, you can govern yourself. Without that reason, you have to be governed by God, by the church, by a dictator, by some elite or chosen few who know better than you, you see. Who know who the... the uh, uh, only and even Plato talked about that. Oh, democracy can't work. The masses are just rabble, um, driven by emotional waves. Uh, best government would be by philosophers. <laughs> you see, so our idea in this is well, the best government uh, would be by the business elite. We want a businessman. We want a rich businessman. Uh, we want a aristocratic class of businessmen, the ones who who go to Yale and who uh, go to prep school and who are groomed uh, to govern, you see. So this whole idea, so anyway, getting back, so I don't digress here. The field of modernity, or modernity is a big question here. Modernity started with the Enlightenment. It is the, it is the discovery of truth through uh, the senses, scientific method is verified by the senses if you can't, all experiments are through the senses. So truth is verified by the senses in agreement with other people who have the same senses. If you can see it and tell it, smell, tell it, uh, see it, taste it, smell it, hear it, uh, 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 what is it? <laughs> Touch it, you see, and other people agree that it's there. Well, then you can say, well, that's true. It's 
true, you see. So this whole scientific method just opened up Europe to this great inventions that have created the modern world. Before that, there was no progress. You say, well, why didn't the Chinese and the Indians have science like us, you see? Well, they were governed by a conservative spirit. And a conservative spirit means it's a, uh, the, the, the battle in the, in the, with modernity is a battle with mythos. So you get these two words, logo, I'm getting this from the book, logos and mythos. A logos comes from the Greeks. It is the perception of the world as being rational, as being uh, held together by discoverable laws, and it is external and objective. Mythos uh, is, is the world is held together by uh, mythology or story or uh, uh, church, religion, you see. And religion is mythos. It's based on the mythos of the Bible. So, oh, mythos is, mythology is fantasy. No, mythos is reality as a story. I mean, news, media works on mythos as one narrative. What's the narrative? That's mythos. The narrative is the myth, mythos. It doesn't mean it's fantasy. It means it gives meaning. If there's no story, there's no... Look in your attic. You got, you got a box full of pictures from your great-great-grandmother? and Nobody knows who they are? Throw them out, there's no meaning. I don't know who that is. My grandmother knew who it was. I don't know. It has no meaning because it has no story. But then if you have a story, oh, that was my great, great aunt and she did this and I got that from her and all that. Oh, I can't throw that picture away. It has a story. That's mythos. Mythos gives meaning. So the story, what's the story? What, you know, who are you? Well, what's your story? <laughs> you see how that works? So we have, my story is too limited, you know. Oh, well, you're bigger than, you're greater than you think you are. You have a greater story. What's your purpose? That's a story. Everything is story. Everything is mythos. But in, in the scientific world, there's no story. It's all f flat facts. You see, nothing wrong with this. I'm not finding fault with either one. We're trying to understand it. So science strips mythos, the story, from reality. And it's very successful in making machines but very unsuccessful in giving you meaning. Science can't tell you why you exist, what your purpose is, or it can come up with scientific reason. Oh, well, your purpose is to survive, or your purpose is to reproduce, or our economy says your purpose is to buy stuff. <laughs> you see? Or the military says your purpose is to die for your country. Or the, uh, the religious say, well, your purpose is to join the church. See, we, that's story, you see. So you can have a lot of different purposes and stories. But anyway, the point is that there is a conflict between these two tidal waves of history. Mythos, which is a conservative spirit, and science, rational, progressive. Liberal is a forward-looking evolution of history, and the conservative spirit is a res reservation and a resistance and a preservation of value. Now here's where we get into it in American politics today. It's a, it's a conflict of values. And here's where we get into what is the meaning of a pro-constitutional judge, you see. Now the code word for this is that a conservative judge will conserve values and go back to the Constitution for its literal meaning and if there's nothing in the Constitution about black people having rights, then you can't have a right. Or if there's no nothing in the Constitution about abortion, nothing in the Constitution about gays, Nothing in there about gay marriage, you see. So if you go back to the Constitution as a literal, 
like going back to the Bible and just literally interpreting the Bible, you see, the literal interpretation of the founding Bible or constitution or script, you see, out of the original word is literally interpreted. There's no evolution of values. All the values stay the same. They're fixed. Oh, you can have science and you can have new things, but values stay the same. So this is about values, you see, and that's mythos. So then values must stay the same, no new values, which means in the, in the conservative uh, code wording is that a conservative judge uh, does, uh, uh, follows the Constitution and does not interpret it. So he doesn't interpret it to have a new value. You can only have the ones that are written. So that then, so that said, so, well, Kavanaugh is a pro-constitutional judge because he is pro-literal interpretation of the Constitution, which means no new values. And you can erase the ones you got because they're illegitimate, you see. They're illegitimate. They're not in the Constitution. Wipe them out. And this is what science did, of course, after the Middle Ages to the mythos of the Catholic Church, you see. The Middle Ages was held together by the mythos or the story of creation as affirmed by the Bible, and it was institutionalized in the Catholic Church. Science came along and says, no, we don't need that. <laughs> you don't need to ask the church uh, for rain you can, you can, or, or, or for air conditioning. You, you can make air conditioning and control the climate in your house, you see. You don't have to ask the God or uh, burn incense uh, to make it cooler, I'm just, but you see what I mean. So, so scientific rationalism bypasses God because you don't need, I mean, you can have God or not, but it's kind of like an afterthought. You don't really need God in order to predict the future. You use science to do that. Science controls the future, you see. But the mythos, the conservative, the value life, you see, includes God, because God is absolute. In, in the modern scientific rational world, there are no absolutes. Einstein said there's, everything's relative, but nothing is fixed. So if nothing is fixed then, values aren't fixed. But then if, they, if your values are fixed and you don't want to change them, you don't want to change your, the, the gender roles of people, uh, you don't want to, I want to know what men are men and women are women. I don't want anything in between. You see, that's a fixed, 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 you see. So if you have to, you have to have something fixed to hang all the fixed values on. So you have not God, you see. God, the Bible, and the Constitution are fixed. And we can hang our values on that and resist the tide of modernity and change and evolution. And the unknown, because if you, if you go into the unknown, you don't know who you're going to be. I want to stay with the known, with the fixed, you see. So this is a battle between the known and the unknown. So the idea of a pro-constitution judge, you see, is ambiguous. It's code. It's a code word. It doesn't mean anything. It's ambiguous. In the scientific, rational world, logic hates ambiguity. You either are for the Constitution or not. You can't be both. You can't flip-flop, you see. So a pro-Constitution judge is a, you are a pro-Constitution and you're not pro. The pro-Constitution is written so, is established progress so you can evolve. So change can happen. Otherwise, we would be a, a, a stuck back in the colonial uh, uh, America. See, we'd be stuck in the past, you see. But we've evolved. So that means the Constitution allows evolvement. So that's pro-Constitution. But then if you're against evolvement and change, and say you're pro-Constitution, you are pro -con you are for the Constitution and against it. Simultaneously. Now that's crazy in the logos, in the, si in the rational world, but it's perfectly okay in the mythos world because mythos is ambiguous. So there you go. Thanks for dropping in.